Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Dear Purdue cadets, Assalamu alaikum. This is Bihullah, lecturer of English in Cadet College, Razmak. I hope you all will be doing well. Uh, you know that I hope you all will be in the best of your health and spirit. And the demand of certain students uh, who are going to appear for the entities, I was asked to deliver a lecture regarding parts of speech. Uh, but doing justice with all parts of speech is, uh, we can say, a bit difficult rather than impossible. Understand because we are running short of time. Uh, and secondly, I do have many other commitments to do. That's why it is a bit hard for me to get it done in few lectures. Understand? But uh, in this lecture and as well as uh, if I try, uh, you can say, I, I would try to deliver many other lectures, two or three lectures, if I could do. Understand? I would just hit upon, I would just try to hit upon those areas, those gray areas, which normally, uh, you can say, a part of examination. And uh, secondly, that uh, you know that uh, grammar uh, plays a vital role. Unless and until you are aware of the nitty-gritty of grammar, you cannot erase, you cannot do any kind of examination properly. Understand? So you must have an understanding, the basic nitty-gritty of grammar. But in this lecture, since we are running, time is running out, we are falling short of time. That's why I would uh, just uh, strike those gray areas which normally uh, become a part of examination, which normally, uh, you can say, or there in your examinations. Understand? So the first lecture that I am going uh, to deliver that is regarding uh, pronoun. Understand? The first lecture which I am going to deliver that is pronoun. Pronoun, you know that uh, since your childhood you have been encountering this term. You have been encountering this term pronoun. Understand? A word which is used instead of a noun is called a pronoun. A word which is used Instead of a noun is called pronoun. For example, look at this sentence. Shahid says that he has finished the work. Shahid says that he has finished the work. As in the definition. Secondly, you people must understand that my whole lecture would be in English. Do, do, I will try, I will try to, you can say, to make it a blending of Urdu and English so that it may fall easy for you, but most of the time my lecture would be in English. Understand whether it is on YouTube or in the class. Understand? So I rely on English because it is an English-oriented uh, class. Understand? It is an English-oriented class. That's why my whole conversation, my whole communication over here would be in English. So I would like to follow me, you can say. Look at, as I said, that a word which is used instead of a noun is called pronoun. Look at this sentence. Shahid says that he has finished the work. I said in the definition pronoun that a word which is used instead of a noun means jo noun ki jaga te istemal ho, usko hum kya kehte hain? Pronoun kehte hain. Look at this term. Shahid says that he has finished the work. Now this he, you can see, this he, is actually has been used for what? For this singular noun which is, which is what? Shahid. Understand? Ye hi kis ke liye istemal hai? Shahid ke liye istemal hai. So, a word which is used instead of a noun, this word has been used for what? Instead of a noun. Shahid is a noun. And secondly, accompanied with pronoun, we do, we do talk about antecedent. Understand? Whenever a noun replaced by pronoun is called its antecedent. Whenever a noun is replaced by what? By a pronoun is called its antecedent. Look at, look at again this sentence. When we just uh, uh, keep in with this sentence, we realize that this he has been used for what? For this shahid. So shahid is the antecedent of he. Shahid is the antecedent of a he because this he is actually referring back to what it is referring back to shahid you can also say that whenever a pronoun refers to a noun understands whenever a pronoun refers back to a noun 
we normally call it antecedent. Understand antecedent. So over here this pronoun which is he and this he is what? This is third person pronoun. We have first person pronoun, we have second person pronoun, we have third person pronoun. In the first person pronoun, uh, pronoun I and we is included. I and we are included. And in the second person pronoun we talk about you. And the third person pronoun we talk about he, she, it and singular or plural noun. Understand? They. So it is all about antecedent and pronoun. Gentlemen, in pronoun, there are many things. As I said in the beginning, that doing justice with parts of speech in few letters, it is not possible. And even with pronoun, pronoun can can't be covered in 10 to 15 lectures. But over here, I would just try to talk about those areas which are exam oriented, which are exam specific. Understand? So possessive, we will talk about possessive pronouns which normally comes in examination. Look at this. Possessive pronoun. What are possessive pronoun? Look at my, your, his, her, our, your, their, its. It normally comes before adjective. It normally comes before adjective or use adjective ko hum kya kehte hain possessive adjective kehte hain look at example look at this example this is my pen this is my pen is i said that my your his her ab yahan par you has bhi samal kar sakte ho different sentences aap construct kar sakte hain understand i will just clear i will try to clear your mind by giving just one example understand it would be extremely easy for you look at this is my pen now what is this my you will definitely put you will definitely raise a question that what is my my is a possessive pronoun but it is not a possessive pronoun. Over here, you cannot call it a possessive pronoun. It normally comes in, uh, you can say, in MCQs. This my is actually modifying what? This pen. And pen is what? Pen is noun. Yeh humare saath noun hai. Aur hum define karte hai. That a word which adds something more into the meaning of a noun or pronoun is called what? Is called adjective. So over here, this my is modifying what? It modifies noun. That's why this my is not possessive pronoun. It is possessive adjective. It is possessive adjective because it works like an adjective. Because it works like an adjective. And secondly, this possessive adjective is also called pronominal adjective. Pronominal Adjective. Why it is called pronominal adjective? Because it is derived from pronoun. Because it is derived from pronoun. That's why it is called pronominal adjective. Look at this. My is actually a possessive pronoun. Understand? But over here it is working like an adjective. That's why it is called pronominal adjective. And this my is actually derived from pronoun. That's why it is called a pronominal adjective. So gentlemen, over here, this is my, it is not a possessive pronoun, rather it is a possessive adjective or pronominal adjective. Why? Because it modifies the word noun pen. Understand? Now, this is the This is the like success. This pen is mine. This pen is mine. Now, if you find a sentence in this way, now over here, the same my has been used in this context. Understand? Now, but this is possessive pronoun. Because it does not modify, it doesn't modify any noun. That's why it is possessive pronoun. For example, you can say over here, you can say, this is your book. Now, your again, it is a possessive pronoun or possessive, uh, sorry, possessive pronoun, or uh, possessive adjective or pronominal adjective. Agar aap isi sentence ko is tarah lege, this pen is yours. This pen, this pen is yours. So, the same noun would become 
possessive pronoun, uh, you can say the same possessive adjective would become possessive pronoun. Understand, this is the main difference between possessive pronoun and possessive adjective. Possessive pronoun ke saath there would be no need of any adjective but possessive adjective ke liye there is need of adjective uh, there is need of noun sorry there is need of noun look at you can see over here this is possessive adjective or pronominal uh, possessive adjective or pronominal adjective why it is called pronominal adjective because it is derived from pronoun and secondly this pen is yours ye possessive pronoun hai or this pen is mine ye bhi isi tarah hai isi tarah our be smart hai this is This is a our pen. इस तरह भी आप इस्तेमाल कर सकते हैं और दिस यू कैन यू कैन यू कैन यू कैन मेक इट इन एनी वे अंडरस्टैंड यू कैन मेक इट इन एनी वे इट इज द मेन डिफरेंस बिटवीन पोजेसिव प्रोनाउन एंड पोजेसिव एजेक्टिव एंड सेकेंडली यू कैन आंसो से यह जरूरी नहीं है कि यहां पर क्या हो पोजेसिव प्रोनाउन के लिए देर इज नो नीड मीन्स विद नाउन भी आप इस्तेमाल कर सकते हैं पोजेसिव प्रोनाउन और विदाउट नाउन भी आप इस्तेमाल कर सकते हैं यू कैन यूज पोजेसिव प्रोनाउन विद नाउन और विदाउट नाउन हाफ लुक एट यू कैन से दिस पेन इज यूअर्स यहां पर तो आपने इस्तेमाल किया है नाउन यू कैन से दिस इज यूअर्स यू डिडेंट यूज एनी नाउन अंडरस्टैंड सेकेंडली दिस पेन इज माइन दिस इज माइन मीन्स के पोजेसिव प्रोनाउन कैन बी यूज विद नाउन और विदाउट नाउन बट पोजेसिव एजेक्टिव कैन नॉट बी यूज विदाउट नाउन देर इज यू कैन से नाउन इज एब्सोलूटली इनडिस्पेंसेबल फॉर पोजेसिव एजेक्टिव और प्रोनामिनल एजेक्टिव यू कैन क्लियरली सी है सो दीज आर आर वर्किंग एज अ पोजेसिव एजेक्टिव और प्रोनामिनल एजेक्टिव एंड दिस कंडीशन माइन यूअर्स हेज हर्स Ours, yours, theirs, its. ये क्या है पोजेसिव प्रोनाउंस है पोजेसिव प्रोनाउंस है नव यू आई होप यू गॉट द डिफरेंस डेट फॉर प्रोनामिनल एजेक्टिव के लिए किस चीज का होना जरूरी है नाउन का होना जरूरी है पोजेसिव प्रोनाउन के लिए किस चीज का होना जरूरी है मीन्स नाउन इस्तेमाल कर भी सकते हैं और इस्तेमाल भी नहीं कर सकते मीन्स देर इज आफ्टर आर विद आर विदाउट अंडरस्टैंड And you people saw over here. Over here it is a possessive pronoun. Over here it is a possessive pronoun. Over here it is a possessive adjective or pronominal adjective. Understand? Second, coming to the reflexive pronoun. Gentlemen, reflexive pronoun and plus emphatic pronoun. Reflexive and plus emphatic pronoun. Emphatic pronoun is also like reflexive pronoun and these two are combinedly called compound personal pronouns compound of personal pronouns combine reflexive pronoun and emphatic pronoun ka dusra naam jo hai wo kya hai compound personal pronouns understand reflexive pronoun mein hamare sath himself herself themselves or self understand themselves ye jitni bhi hai ye self selves understand yourself एंड सेल्स वाले जितनी भी है ये हमारे साथ क्या है रिफ्लेक्सिव प्रोनाउन है अंडरस्टैंड इट इज व्हाट इट इज रिफ्लेक्सिव प्रोनाउन इफ यू डिफाइन रिफ्लेक्सिव प्रोनाउन व्हाट इट इज इफ यू डिफाइन रिफ्लेक्सिव प्रोनाउन व्हाट इट इज रिफ्लेक्सिव प्रोनाउन एन एक्शन डन बाय द सब्जेक्ट व्हेन इट बेट्स अंडरस्टैंड सम एन एक्शन डन बाय द सब्जेक्ट टर्न्स बैक अपॉन द सब्जेक्ट अंडरस्टैंड मींस जो एक्शन सब्जेक्ट करे वो एक्शन दोबारा सब्जेक्ट पर हो क्या हो जाए टर्न्स बेक हो जाए उसी को हम क्या कहते हैं रिफ्लेक्सिव प्रोनाउन कहते हैं इम्फेटिक प्रोनाउन भी कह सकते हैं लेकिन इम्फेटिक प्रोनाउन नॉर्मली हम किसके लिए इस्तेमाल करते हैं इट इज यूज फॉर स्ट्रेस इट इज यूज फॉर एम्फेसिस इट इज यूज टू एम्फेसाइज जोर देने के लिए ताकीद देने के लिए हम इस्तेमाल करते हैं सो रिफ्लेक्सिव प्रोनाउन एन एक्शन डन बाई द सब्जेक्ट एन एक्शन डन बाई द सब्जेक्ट वेन इट टर्न बेक अपॉन द सब्जेक्ट इट इज कॉल्ड रिफ्लेक्सिव प्रोनाउन लुक एट दिस एग्जाम्पल ही वेल सोन रोइन हिमसेल्फ नव दिस हिमसेल्फ एज आई सेट दट हिमसेल्फ सेल्व आर सेल्फ सेल्फ और सेल्फ आ जाए तो इसको हम क्या कहते हैं रिफ्लेक्सिव प्रोनाउन कहते हैं अंडरस्टैंड नव दिस एक्शन the action done by the subject is turning back is turning on back upon what upon the subject that's why it is called reflexive pronoun what is emphatic emphatic is the name indicates that it is used for stress 
इट इज यूज टू एम्फेसाइज जोर देने के लिए ताकिद देने के लिए हम नॉर्मली इस्तेमाल करते हैं एंड जेंटलमैन यू पीपल मस्ट अंडरस्टैंड दैट नॉर्मली नॉर्मली एम्फेटिक प्रोनाउन प्रोनाउंस आर नॉर्मली यूज्ड जस्ट आफ्टर सब्जेक्ट जस्ट आफ्टर अ सब्जेक्ट देयर आर कंडीशंस देयर आर कंडीशन व्हिच मे कम एट द एंड बट नॉर्मली एम्फेटिक प्रोनाउंस दे कम आफ्टर लुक एट Reflexive pronouns over here. It has been used here. Understand? But emphatic pronouns are normally comes after a, are normally used after subject. Understand? Look at you. You are self or responsible for this. Look at the tone of this sentence. Look at the tone of this sentence. When you utter this sentence, you will realize that yes, I am emphasizing something. You, you are self. Or responsible for this. Look at this sentence. Whenever you are uttering, whenever you are, whenever you spell out this sentence, you will realize that yes, I am emphasizing something. I am stressing something. That's why you will call it this that it is an emphatic pronoun. It is an emphatic pronoun. Understand? It is all about the reflexive pronoun and emphatic pronoun. Talking about relative pronoun, it's very very important. Understand talking about a relative pronoun. It the name indicates that it shows relation. It manifests relation. It magnifies relation. Have it relates the idea back to some noun. Understand? जो noun आप beginning में इस्तेमाल करते हैं, उसके बाद जब आप relative pronoun इस्तेमाल करते हैं, तो वो relative pronoun refers to what? To the noun. Which you have used in the prior. Understand? Which you have used in the beginning, in the inception. Understand? Look at this sentence. Relates the idea back to some noun. Look at this sentence. The man who is honest is trusted. Look at this. The pronunciation of this term is not honest. It is honest. Understand? The man who is honest is trusted. Gentlemen, this who is used for what? This is related to pronoun. It shows relation with what? Relates the idea back to some noun. Man is a noun. Understand? And this who, which is a related to pronoun, referring to what? To the noun. Now, gentlemen, definitely there would come a question in your mind: that what are the uses? What are the various, the multifarious uses of who? And same is the case with watch, which we have seen is the case with that. Understand? We will talk about this because it is normally important for, uh, for you can say, for examination. Talking about who, who do चीज़ के लिए इस्तेमाल करते हैं हम? Person के लिए and plus animal के लिए. Normally we don't understand whether who is used for animals or not. But gentlemen, when we are talking about gigantic animals, understands big animals. अंडरस्टेड उसके लिए हम क्या इस्तेमाल कर सकते हैं हु आप इस्तेमाल कर सकते हैं बिग एनिमल्स के लिए जोगेंटिक अंडरस्टेड फॉर एग्जांपल देयर लिव्ड अ लायन हु वाज वेरी ओल्ड जेंटलमैन लायन इज अ जोगेंटिक एनिमल्स एंड दैट्स व्हाई ओवर हेयर इट हु हैज बीन यूज्ड सो हु कैन बी यूज्ड फॉर एनिमल्स नॉर्मली वी एसोसिएट हु विद पर्संस With people, we normally when we talk about people, when we address people, we normally rely on using who. Understand? But you can also use when you talk about gigantic animals, like lion. Understand? You can use it. So there lived a lion. So since lion is a big animal, that's why we can use who. Secondly, is person के लिए You people saw over here that the man who is honest is trusted. You people saw that to who I'm normally person kill. So this is a simple rule. Hai. And the same, but it is an exception. Sometimes we do use it for gigantic animals. So if you come across in MCQs where animal, a big animal is used, over there you can rely on using who. Understand? Secondly, talking about which. Which हम normally किसकी देशी इस्तेमाल करते हैं? Which is normally used for non-living and animals. दोनों के लिए हम इस्तेमाल कर सकते हैं. Means बेजानशा ये जो unanimate objects होते हैं, unanimate object and animals दोनों के लिए हम इस्तेमाल कर सकते हैं. Look at the moment which is last 
is lost forever. Now it is written by something which is non-living. Understand? So over here you can use which. Understand? The horse which I recently bought is a talk. Horse is actually animal. So as I said in the beginning that it can be used for noun naming and animals. So over here horse is an animal. That's why you can use which. Which is actually referring to this animal. Understand? Secondly, we have that is also a relative pronoun. It is normally used for person and things. Dunu ki liyat samal kar sakta hai. Like normally keep one thing in your mind. That is normally used for ideas, for notions, for perceptions. The saurat, khayalat ki liyat hume samal karte hai. Understand? That is normally person ki liyat samal kar sakte hai. You can use for person. You can use for things. But commonly it is used for ideas. Tasurat khyalat ki liyam istamal ka. Look at. I know the house that he lives in. It is a thing. It is a thing. That's why you can use that. Understand? But when we talk about the idea. Over there you will. You will. I saw no kapisam ki the idea which you express is very impressive. No. The idea that you express is very impressive. Why? Because it is normally used for ideas. So gentlemen, whenever, whenever you come across any statement where idea is embedded, where an idea is, uh, you can say manipulated, where an idea is ingrained, you would be required to use that instead. You would require to what? To use what? That. Since the idea yaha par ek idea ki baat ho rahi hai, ek perception ki baat ho rahi hai, ek notion ki baat ho rahi hai, that's why you will use that. You cannot say which are the idea which you expressed is very impressive. You can't use. Normally for ideas hum kya istamal karte hai? That istamal karte hai. Secondly, there are certain things which are uh, very very important to be understood that look at these few sentences I have said in the beginning that after superlative degree keep one thing in your mind whenever you use superlative degree after that you will use what? that look at this is the base that we can do why? Because it is a superlative degree. Good, better, best. Best is a superlative degree. And after superlative degree, you will use that. You cannot use which. You cannot use who. You cannot use what. You will use that instead. Understand? So this is the best that we can do. Best is a superlative degree. After superlative degree, you will use what? That. Second kya hai? There are certain words where you would be, you will be required to use that after those words. For example, only nothing same all. Only nothing same and all. Ye four aise words hai. Agar ye sentence mein a jaye, in ke baad aap dete samal karen. You must understand this thing. Understand? Look at this. All is not good that glitters. Over here, all has been used. That's why you would be bound to use what? That. In the inception of a sentence, you can see all has been used. That's why you would be required to use that. As I said, if these words are only nothing same all. In a sentence, mein, understand? अगर आल आ जाए सेंटेंस में इसके बाद डेट इस्तेमाल करेंगे अगर इसी तरह सेम आ जाए इसी तरह नथिंग आ जाए इसी तरह आल आ जाए अंडरस्टैंड सुवर है आल हैज बीन यूज्ड इन द बिगिनिंग दैट्स व्हाई दैट विल बी यूज्ड सेकंड सेंटेंस देखिए ही इज द सेम दैट ही हैज सीन सेम हैज बीन यूज्ड दैट्स व्हाई यू विल यूज दैट अंडरस्टैंड ही इज नॉट ही इज द सेम व्हाट ही हैज सीन 
वट आप इस्तेमाल नहीं कर सकते हैं विच भी आप इस्तेमाल नहीं कर सकते हैं हु भी आप इस्तेमाल नहीं कर सकते हैं यू वुड बी बाउंड टू यूज दैट बिकॉज सेम यूज हुआ है इट इज फॉर नथिंग दैट ही स्टडीड इंग्लिश ओवर हेयर नथिंग हैज बीन यूज दैट्स वाई दैट आप यूज यूज करेंगे अंडरस्टैंड सेकेंड सेंटेंस मैन इज द ओनली एनिमल दैट कैन टैक वाई only has been used that's why you will use that i hope it is clear enough i think there is nothing it is something where you reflect rules and regulation and uh, i'm sure there would be no difficulty while digesting the very essence of it understand again gentlemen uh, there are certain conditions there are certain important rules and regulations which are important to be understood before going to any examination understand that is a uh, i will talk about uh, certain things as we are done with all this thing so over here discussing all these rules and regulation it is not uh, possible for me so that uh, look at gentlemen about indefinite pronoun indefinite pronoun gentlemen is means indefinite pronoun which may refers to anything not clear understand that's why it is called indefinite pronoun jis tarah hamare sath somebody hai anybody hai anyone hai someone hai nothing hai understand these are all indefinite pronouns understand but before before talking about indefinite pronouns i must tell you the difference between some and any when you understand the difference between some and any the difference that we have between some and any will be applied to all for example somebody anybody someone anyone means some or any ke darmiyan jo fark hai wahi fark someone our some एनी वन के दरमियान है वही फर्क एनी वन और एनी बडी के दरमियान है बट द फर्स्ट थिंग विच इज रिक्वायर्ड टू बी अंडरस्टूड दैट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन सम एंड एनी जेंटलमैन आई हैव सेड दैट एनी सम इज यूज्ड इन पॉजिटिव एंड क्वेश्चन सेंटेंसेस लुक एट दिस सेंटेंस हैव यू ब्रॉट some paper and a pen some paper and a pen gentlemen whenever the expected answer is this of this question is yes or no the question over here that i am asking that have you brought some paper and a pen the expected answer is yes so in such a question we use some we use some we use a some so in such a question we use some second use kya hai positive affirmative sentence mein hum istemal karte hain means some some has a sense of positivity it is used in positive sentences for example i like to eat some fruits now it is a positive sentence there is no negativity there is no negativity it is a positive statement that's why you will use some you cannot say i like to eat any fruit any has a sense of negativity any has a sense of negativity that's why over here it cannot be used it is a positive statement in a positive and affirmative sentence we rely on using some instead of any look at we talk about two uses first we talk about that it is used some is used in question sentences where the expected answer is yes or no you saw have you brought some paper and a pen understand and second i said that it is normally used in positive statement in positive sentences and over here you people saw that in positive sentence some has been used understand now if you talk about the use of negative 
सॉरी यूज ऑफ एनी एनी इज नॉर्मल यूज फॉर वॉट एनी इज यूज इन नेगेटिव प्लस इंट्रोगेटिव सेंटेंस नेगेटिव आई लुक एट दिस एग्जाम्पल हैव यू गॉट एनी रेजर ब्लेड्स Have you got any razor blades? So, gentlemen, in the question sentences, in the question sentences, we can use some and any both. Question me in targeted sentences. Me, if some be asked, me, for example, if you are making a polite request, understand. Would you like to eat some fruit? Would you like to eat uh, some fruit? It is a polite request. So if you are making a polite request over there, you will be using what? Some. Same is the case here. You can use in the interrogative sentence. Both can be used. Some be able to smile for something. Any be able to smile for something. But in negative sentence, keep one thing in your mind. It is very very important that some is used in positive sentences. For example, अगर इसी सेंटेंस को मैं नेगेटिव में कन्वर्ट कर लू आई डोंट लाइक एनी फ्रूट यू कैन नॉट से आई डोंट लाइक सम फ्रूट वाई बिकॉज आई डोंट लाइक डोंट इज अ नेगेटिव स्टेटमेंट इट इज इट इज इट हैज अ सेंस ऑफ इट इट केयर इज अ सेंस ऑफ निगेटिविटी सो वेन एवर देर इज अ सेंस ऑफ निगेटिविटी ओवर देर यू वुड बी यूजिंग वॉट एनी ओवर देर यू वुड बी यूजिंग वॉट ऑफ एनी तो जनता बेन वी विल लेट्स टॉक अबाउट द लेट फर्स्ट कंक्लूड फर्स्ट कंक्लूड दिस द डिफरेंस बिटवीन सम एंड एनी and then the second lecture will be uh okay, okay let, let, let me conclude it i like to eat some fruit so it is it is a positive statement understand so positive sentences mein hum kya istemal karte hain some negative sentences mein agar ek isi sentence ko main negative mein convert karu i don't like any fruit aap istemal karenge understand so have you got any reserve blades is tarah question mein bhi aap in istemal kar sakte hain and thirdly never hardly without and later these are the four words which have a sense of negativity that's why whenever they come in a step in a sentence it will be followed by any understand in ke baad aap kya istemal karenge any aap istemal karenge you cannot use some means have look at a never hardly 